Good evening. We begin today's episode with a on a somber note. As you notice, Kidim is not with us. After agreeing to be there every single episode, <laughs> I apologize for my absence during this time. You know, we decided to set a time, and that that's the time for podcasting. So now. It is just season sure, it's just season sure. two, episode three. Meaning one episode has passed. And this is now the second episode since he's made that statement. And he's no longer with us. We're supposed to make a bet, Dran. We're supposed to make us with us. But fair not. We have a guest on today's episode who's gonna give us his insight on, you know, is our he sports a guest at this point? He's here more than Kadim. No, he's not a, he's he's a co he's a co star. Exactly. He's a the, co-star. The behind the scenes co-star. <laughs> I fine with it. <laughs> Cause you know, the show must go on. The show must go on. But welcome back to the Fanatic Islanders. Your home for sports, sports entertainment, and now I guess your home for not Kadeem. Yeah. Not Kadeem. Wow. <laughs> that, that's what y'all should name the episode. <laughs> not Kadeem. Not, not Kadeem. Not Ah, Lord. Uh, you know, it, it didn't take long for him not to show up. Yeah, yeah. I expected it sooner. Exactly. I expected it sooner. I expected him to leave within that episode he said it, but he made one. You got to give him the credit for it. Will he be back? It's like a Tom Brady ring, but it's inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. Will he be back? We don't know. You got to well, ask him. The show must go on. If you see him out in public, ask him. Say, but what you doing? You coming back? I don't know what he could tell you, but rumor has it mm. he's splitting off to make his own podcast. <laughs> and calling it what? We don't know. Watermelon Bubby. <laughs> <laughs> if, rumor if, has you, it. if you know that t- that story behind Watermelon Bubby, then you really know him for a long time. <laughs> oh wow! But if you see Kenyam out there, ask him what's up. And just, you know, t- um, find out from him so you can tell us. Find out from him so you can tell us. I agree. Today, it's a good Saturday. Good Saturday to talk about sports. We in the stew again. Like Come say, on. We still, That's what we do. We can bring the episode to you regardless. Mm-hmm. We can bring the episode to you regardless. And, oh, we appreciate all the, the support and over the lo- on the last two videos. Keep the sport up. Leave the comments. Subscribe. It. Keep it up. Help us. Help us direct the show like how you want to see it. Help us direct the show like how you want to see it. Should, should we go into it? Why not? Are you ready? All right. I've been ready. So I got a good one. I got a good one. So in honor of Kadeem not being here. This one, this random sports fact. And actually, owner? oh, he might know what it is. Yeah, he might know what it is. Yeah, he probably knows right. what it is. You're right. So, it's an it's a it's a F1 sports fact. Oh yeah, he definitely. So, knows. at 120 miles per hour, a Formula One car generates so much downforce that it can drive upside down on a roof of a tunnel. So yeah, he knew that. He knew. He probably did. So he, he it, knew that so much that I probably knew that. So it doesn't just happen in games. It, hop- <laughs> it, it can happen in real life, too. Will they try it? Probably not. You're probably going to die. But that is, that <laughs> is, in the words of Kadeem, that is friggin' fast. Yeah, I agree. He would say that, too, you see. Kadeem knows, Kadeem knows it all. Kadeem knows it all. Yeah. Um, if you knew that sports fact, let us know. If you have a site that has more sports facts that you know you want to see, send it to us. But like we said, every week we will bring you a new sports fact or new random sports fact that we don't know. So we're assuming that you guys don't know too, and we'll Probably. learn it together. Yeah, we'll learn it together. And like moving along, mm-hmm. I also got you know a cool sport you might not have heard about. And this is a good one because it kind of spoke out to me as like, you know, 
choose me. And so I was like, yeah, if not, why not? What's, if the not, name? Why not? What's the name of it? Man versus Horse Marathon. That sounds like an L. It is. It is. <laughs> okay. So Horse has always compiled with complied with man's bidding. Cleverly, it appears knowing that one day the ultimate challenge to determine the bigger man or horse would arise in due course. In this 22 mile man versus beast marathon, horses even levels the athletic terrain by literally creating a non level terrain. As much of the marathon mileage is spent threading through swamps and wooded areas. So that made no, no sense to me. So I don't I don't know what's happening now. I went to, to the Wikipedia page. Is this happening somewhere in Northern Europe? This is oh, like some Viking it, type it, stuff. It definitely is. I, I know. I know. It had to be. <laughs> so the Man versus Horse Marathon is an annual race over 22 miles or 35 kilometers if you into those kind of things. But where runners <laughs> compete against riders on horseback through a mix of road, trail, and mountainous terrain. The race, which is a shorter distance than an official marathon road race, takes place in the Welsh town of... Only could have been. I cannot pronounce this word. Lai... Lion... Ask somebody from there. Uh, Lanworted. <laughs> that doesn't even have vowels, sir. <laughs> I, I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> Lionworted Wells every June. There are other man... I don't know. There's no vowels. There's literally no vowels in the, in the places that vowels are supposed to be. Which I'd be like, yawn. <laughs> there are other man versus horse races in Scotland based at Doris near Doris? Loch Ness in Central North Island, New Zealand, and in Prescott, Arizona. I'm surprised by none of them places, to be honest. The Arizona one's a bit surprising because I ain't racing no hot, no, no um, oh, yeah, horse in it's hot. Die. Yeah, you might die. They had to be doing that like peak December or something. Yeah, so like it's not all bad, I guess. Mm -hmm. If you're one of the guys who are riding on a horse, yeah, you cheating. But no, you still gotta um, um, train the horse to like climb mountains, to go through swamp, to go through. I guess the trail and all of that. I like guess. I could see, I could see us doing it. Like here in the Bahamas, we probably do um, man versus shark. Shark, we've done a lot of mine for the shark. You mean Bob Gay? The shark, uh, shark uh, the shark, oh, usually, <laughs> the shark Yo, usually we wins. We always do the ultimate challenge every day, man versus conk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man versus conk, wow. Conk, the conk usually wins, and apparently at the end of the race, it always appears to be conk on conk. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Because why are you racing it? a conk to begin with? That's the question. Because you're the conk. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Conky man. Conk moan no me. But, you know, that's, your, that's the cool sport you might not have heard about. I certainly didn't hear about it. Yeah, I don't um, even know where you find that, to be honest. That's serious. I feel like the only person who actually knew about that sport was Kadeem. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. He competed in it, of course. But um, like I said, every week, every every episode will bring you a random sports fact, and every episode will bring you a cool sport you might not have heard about. Just mm -hmm. to um, liven things up and enlighten yourselves while we are, you know, getting enlightened and mixing it up. Just adding to the episode, adding to the episode. Like I said, comments are appreciated. If you like it, let us know. If you don't like it. Let us know. You don't have to let us know if you don't yeah. like it. If you don't. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll take it into consideration. We'll, yeah, we'll take the feedback and, you know, we'll improve, I guess. Yeah, like I said, we, no, we will. And it's also, we, it also forecasts we have more segments coming up. Um, we're not going to reveal what they are just yet, but we stay, tuned you. with the, stay tuned with the Fanatic Islanders. You'll find out eventually. Exactly. So you giving them the meat and potatoes, huh? Yeah, I, I actually, I actually, I'm hungry. I didn't eat before this. Exactly, we gotta hit them hard with it. Why? They just gotta know what it is. Just gotta know. Yeah, go on with it. All right, let's get to the main topic at High Hill. That is, I don't know. I think it's a big topic in all sports. It's a serious one. 
basically betting on yourself. And what that means is basically saying you are a top tier athlete coming to the end of probably your rookie contract. You in the league now. You one of the best players there are. Or you feel like you are. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you are and you deserve to be compensated in that way. Now the owners of your team or the people who give you your check week to week they may not feel the same way they may feel like in some areas you are great but they will address in other areas hey this is why you can't get the amount you want but we are still giving you such a substantial amount of money you have to put into question whether you take this or not just burst some with it Exactly. It just burst you with the money. So yes, it's ri- it's ridiculous. So I mean, we have a lot of that happening in sports right now, and it's like, is there a right or wrong when it comes to that type of situation? So I don't think I don't think anyone's wrong for betting on yourself. It just depends on how high in regard that you hold yourself. But sometimes you have the wrong, uh, to get do a wrong bet. Sometimes you got to know, have self-awareness and do the right thing and go where you need to go, take what you need to get and then build from there. I agree. Exactly. So um, we'll, highlight a, we'll highlight a lot. We'll highlight a few um, um, cases where like athletes have bet on themselves and where they've been successful, whether they've been, failed, whether they've, What's worse than fail? Worse than fail. Whether they conked themselves. Bombed. Where yeah. they just literally turned on an $80 million deal and basically ended up with a $6 million deal for one year the next year. And now they come back to the place what offered them a lot of money and now they're only getting almost a veteran's minimum. I think that was a giveaway right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't know who we're talking about. You're talking about Dennis Schroeder. So, man, I feel sorry for him now that we call him out like that. But he's fine, man. He got he, plenty of money. He's good. Yeah, he's, he's fine. Good. He he has plenty of money. He could have had a lot more money. I agree. But he and he balled. He balled out in that year that he um, was offered that contract. Mm. Oh, you mean? Yeah, he, two years, two years. Yeah, ago. the two years. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. When he to go, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to get the first offer of the contract. Yeah, I know what you meant last year. I was like, mm, but um, yeah. I'm guessing he didn't feel like that was up to his standard, and he deserved more. That he thought another organization would. This have is my him thing. Bad on yourself, cool, but when you ain't even the best player on your team, and you've never seen this amount of money before, you should probably take it. You should probably take it. (laughs) That doesn't even make sense. Why would you not take that? So, I mean, the... You're not even the second best player on your team. (laughs) You are arguably the fourth. All jokes aside, (laughs) I'm glad that he's still in the league because that could take a mental toll on you because to be offered 80-some million dollars just to be offered um, pretty much now, we'll call it the, the vet men. Or like close to like tax like medium tax player um, level contract. Yeah, that would that would take a mental toll on a lot of people. A lot of people would have probably quit the league. Yeah, I mean, I would have to question your mental fortitude. <laughs> exactly. If you declined in LeBron, who got you paid? It ain't like you got paid on your own. LeBron helped you to get paid. Let's yep. be real. Though. And you just say no in front of company. <laughs> no, you gotta be doing that. You gotta be doing that can't and if it was if it was someone in a circle telling him to like reject it you could probably get more i hope that person is no longer in his circle what if that was his wife i hope that person is no longer in his oh, circle. wow that's dark that's dark no, wow bro mm. that could that could break mm. up that could break up a relationship that could break up a marriage it's possible it's possible you know what 80 some million dollars is I mean, yeah, that's, five million, six million is still a lot of money. That ain't like life people, changing money though. For people who don't have a lot, but like eighty yeah. some million dollars. Yeah, that's life changing money. 
And the thing is that eighty some million dollars could be a springboard to even more money because then that's exactly you could, you could go look for endorsements. You could go look for um, investments. Just your money can make your money for you. I agree. But anyways, I guess when we get talking the top tier talent now, the Aaron Judges of the world. Jeez. So Aaron Judge is going to make a team very poor. This off season can't make the math boy. Just, uh, just saying. He will try, <laughs> but uh, he was offered a big contract um, last off season. It's not enough. Said nah. Not uh, enough. Y'all gonna pay me next off season. I'm gonna just show you what it is. And right now, at at the time of this recording, he has what sixty home runs. Sixty. Yeah. Maybe more. He probably gonna have sixty five by the time we air this. So there's that. There is that. Yeah. So yeah, I think he had like it's like it's like sixty. So yeah. it's it's amazing because like he had fifty two as a rookie, and then um, I think he was injured a bit last year. He was injured the last couple of years. Yeah, but it's like. You know, it kind of fell off, and it was like, you know what? Um, I think you should take this amount of money. And he's like, no, nah, I know I good for it. So exactly, he about to make someone pretty. And the cool. crazier thing is, most of these contracts for guys over thirty, trash contracts. Exactly, <laughs> trash contract. Robinson can know. I don't know why the Mariners, and then the Mets after the Mariners paid this man, and then all the other ones. I'm like, I mean, Alex Rodriguez. Eh. It's okay, I guess. Some, it's of them, some, of them, some of them, some of them deserve it. Like I say, baseball is a sport where there's no ceiling. So because there's no ceiling, it's like. But if I over thirty and I get a hundred million dollar contract, it's like. Because they paint, they playing I, until four, like Abel Pujols. Pujols is still playing, you know. That's Pujols though. Like he was playing before some of these guys was born. That's Pujols though. Shout out to seven hundred um, home runs. Even though he pissed me off in two thousand six, but everything cool. <laughs> I didn't really like the Cardinals that much, but everything goes. But like I say, Aaron. Respect, sir. 700, okay. Aaron Judge, like, that's a case of, like, betting on yourself. And, like, a lot of people should take um, that standard, that model into consideration when they decide oh. to do it, when they go against things on these tables. The one of ones, though. Not the shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will yeah. quote. With the great philosopher slash greatest rapper in the game right now. Glorilla said. <laughs> you know what she say? She said 99 problems, but she's one of them or something like that. No, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. <laughs> she said she ain't bleep about a credit score. Yeah, yeah, same song. She might be rich as tomorrow. So she ain't worried about all this stuff going all these problems with all these regular with people is we just worried about. You can't worry about that stuff, people. You got to just ball out and the money could come. That's all. That's all I mean. That's all I mean. So if you was a superstar athlete, ball out and stop trying to fall into the owner's hands. Make these owners write the check. Make them write the big check. That's all. That's all it takes. <laughs> That's all it takes. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to be on those on these bargain value um, contracts, making five million dollars, and you you playing on like a you know you could play it like a sixty million a year money. I know that's no one, but I don't know. that's why I say Lamar ball out, but win the Super Bowl. But I think nobody be mad if Lamar win the Super Bowl. I would because. You don't want the Eagles to win the Super If we don't win and Lamar win, you wouldn't be as bad if somebody else win. Yeah, I would be. I would be. <laughs> I, I would be if he played us. <laughs> if, it, if it's I, any other team, yeah. Okay. I would be, but at the end of the day, I'd be like, eh. No, I, I would be. He I'd, get $400 million, though. No, no. He bet on himself. And Think about it this way, man. What if the players, if they weren't on those teams, what those teams would be? I agree with you, right? And remember, I had this. You was, you was you saw the the conversation in the mining group like a couple of days ago. I I don't know. But we were talking about the the Ravens versus Dolphins game. Mm-hmm. And 
I was like, you know, I, I'm going to hold Lamar to a higher standard than I hold other like people to. They, they thought it was a race thing. It's not. It's just I expect so much of Lamar. As you should. So if the Ravens are leading 35 to 14 in the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. and you know your defense is doo-doo parade, parade, yeah. Jeez, that's, that's serious. Don't give the ball back to your defense. Do what you have to do as a quarterback. You bet on yourself. You're your own agent. Do what you have to do, and you take over that game. You win that game. You just need a few first downs. You just need a few um, conversions, and you that game is over. No one's talking about the Dolphins. Everyone's talking about how you were able to um, to secure that win. Mm-hmm. If the flashiness is great, yeah, but it don't mean anything to be flashy if you lose. But overall, is a team carrying that terrible D into the playoffs besides Lamar? Is a, is a person carrying that D into the playoffs? No, Lamar could carry them to the playoffs. But I'm saying you could carry, you could carry, look at Aaron Rodgers. You could carry a team to the playoffs all you want. But if you can't win in the games that actually count, then that's a whole another season you have, you just lost. But the thing uh, is, you yeah, not pay Aaron Rodgers though. Aaron Rodgers get his forty mil for yeah. No, yeah, I, I'm saying he did it, and he's he's won them games. But I'm just saying, you as an elite quarterback, mm-hmm. right? You as an elite quarterback. Quarterbacks are making all kind of money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Russell Wilson just got his his contract, but quarterbacks are making all kind of money, and they're throwing around this word elite. I think Lamar can be a elite quarterback, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying that Tom isn't losing that game. Aaron isn't losing that game. Patrick isn't losing that game. But this the thing. Tom have a wife making half a bill. So he don't care. But he can win, yeah. Patrick Bones already have a half a billion dollar contract. Aaron Rodgers getting forty million a year. My thing with Lamar is they need to pay that bond because it's like No, they do. They do. But I'm saying I'm saying games like that. I know we have to make the game count, but yeah. I mean, eh. Games like that are going to be a knock on him. When he goes back into that thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to bring up the tape. They can bring up the tape. Hey, you was up 35 to 14. You wouldn't get paid. I mean, yeah, you can't, like I say, you cannot put that on Lamar's fault. That's not Lamar's fault for losing that game. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be luck as such because he is that quarterback who bet on himself to well. do it. So, like, that's, the, that's part of the negative effect because now you do have a brighter spotlight on you. And, no, it is warranted. Mm-hmm. And like, and everything, but but the beauty of the sport is I could always push up. You can, you I can. Get money from somebody else. You can. I can always do that. Say Ravens, okay, find somebody else. If y'all feel like, yeah, I get the job done. That's why I don't believe in loyalty in sports. I don't care what Damian Lillard has to say, bro. I'm like, bro, if you balling or if you ain't balling up to a certain boy, and you feel like, oh, this team loyal to me. Just because they loyal to me, they draft me and all that stuff. That's never the reality, though. Look at look at Donovan Mitchell. That's not a reality, bro. Like, come look, on. Look at Donovan Mitchell. Look at Rudy Gobert. Like, it's yeah. teams are teams are loyal to a fault. There, it's more like you don't have the you don't have these teams like that can have Dirk on their franchise for all these years. That can exactly. have Kobe on their franchise for all these years. Exactly. LeBron has LeBron has um, changed teams. My thing right. is. And he's, he still was loyal to Cleveland. Like, he still say, hey, I can come back and I'll, I'll exactly. get you one. But Exactly. My thing is. Got to do what's best for you. Jordan, give him the blueprint anyway. Everybody getting mad at LeBron. But everybody see what the Bulls do to Jordan, bro. They was like, okay, you win six championships. You all wash now. Push up. So how y'all can get mad at LeBron for moving teams? If he see what happened to even the greatest player ever. It's like, okay, we don't need you no more. Bye. And everyone is everyone always try to like, wa- um, like brush what? that that <laughs> everyone is be brushing that wizards that wizards yeah thing they act like ain't never happened. So I don't know it is what it is. I don't know why Damian Lillard act like that. Maybe that's just in his DNA. But I'm saying if a better point guy come up at some point and he ain't playing as good, what do you think gonna happen? They can they can get someone else. <laughs> okay, it's really that simple. I know. I mean, go get your money, but get it by any means. If you feel like you have enough skill, ball out. Go get what you worth. Blah, blah, blah. And there are like there are um, instances where um, someone who actually bet on themselves and then they got what they deserve and wanted more money. Not wanted more money, but then they started to freak out. So, like I'll, 
I'll I'll call um Carson Wentz. Oh, so Carson Wentz got the a hundred million dollar deal from oh, which, which year this was? I Scott, but huh? Which year this was? This is this was after they won the Super Bowl. Yeah, it was after the Super Bowl. Okay. It was after the Super Bowl. So I was Scott, bro. You got the hundred million Scott. dollar. You got the hundred million dollar deal. I didn't even talk about golf deal, but you got the hundred million dollar deal because hey, I kid you not, Eagles would not have gone to the Super Bowl without Carson Wentz. No matter what, like people said, he was balling at an MVP level. Too lucky Kitty me now. No, but he was <laughs> regardless. He was balling at MVP. Kitty don't watch football. Kitty, he was, but Carson Wentz was balling at MVP level. That was that was very deserved. That mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he deserved that contract. But how he went out and drafted Jalen Hurts in the second round, so it's more like um, Carson now has a target on his back. But why you? thinking of yourself with a target on your back whereas you just got a hundred million dollars for not winning the Super Bowl like Nick Foles really came in and won the Super Bowl exactly. after you got injured so you were secure you had a hundred million dollars why are you worried about um a rookie who was drafted just go um, play ball bro. just go play ball you already got your money so it was already some investment mm-hmm. into you to be like the franchise quarterback to go ahead and do it again well, what happened to Nick Foles um, he with the Colts now. Yeah, oh. I mean, I mean, the pocket spent a first round pick on a quarterback, and you think, and you think they care? They don't care, bro. <laughs> like I said, so I don't know why Wentz getting salty. Like I said, and we probably this is probably gonna be another topic. Like later on, it's like it's so much people. I guess we could just talk about the quarterback position, but it's like so much people. The quarterback position is just the fact that there aren't enough teams for these quarterbacks. So you can find probably thirty four. Maybe 36. 36 is a stretch, but with people coming out of college and the continual, like, um, yeah. turnover, you can find uh, probably 36. Revolving door. Yeah, you can find probably 36 um, capable starting quarterbacks because you do have a lot of high-quality backups who can possibly start on on other teams. Yeah, that's why Jacoby Brissett and all of them starting right now. Yeah, but you have to bet on yourself, right? So, And that's the thing. So to put it on the flip side from Carson's side is – um, Jalen Hurts has been betting on himself. He bet on himself last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been betting on himself, I guess, his whole career, his whole um, um, collegiate career, and his whole professional career. As in, okay, well, I'm I just in a place. I'm just gonna go and ball up. So, what do you do if Jalen Hurts win MVP this year? You cashing out, you giving um, him the money you want, or what you doing? I still going. So it depends. So um, I will give him money, but he's not up. His contract's not up yet. I know. But that's I'm saying the that's the <laughs> that's the consider the consideration is there. Mm-hmm. The consideration is there. So if he wins MVP and he eventually he goes ahead and he goes win the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. then you you have it in your head. Yeah, this my guy. I doing what I could do to to keep him. So it's just a, like it's, it's natural progression. So you have a you have a mark in your head, and as he like checks box on, on those markers. Then you your the price rises up and whatnot, and I think that like possibly goes back to Lamar, mm-hmm. whereas Lamar has won an MVP, but Lamar is still one for three in the playoffs. So yeah, you are um, a good quarterback. You could win MVP, but you won one playoff game in your career. You lost three. Josh mm-hmm. Allen is one three. Lost three, so like similar boat, but Josh Allen has more playoff success. And yes, a lot of these teams have been the issue, but Josh Allen already signed, eh? Yeah, yeah, he already signed. See, the thing with Lamar though is, I think he's trying to maximize now because he's doing more than most quarterbacks have to, do, at least in my eyes. Because Josh Allen, he might not have the run game, but he have Stephon Diggs. That's one of the best receivers in the league. Mm-hmm. To be real. But they went on and get him. Very true. But the Ravens just like, Lamar, do everything. So it's like, Lamar's like, if you want me to do everything, you got to pay me. Like, I'm doing everything, though. You got to just be like, oh, do everything. Like, Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel's like, bro, I run in the ball. I catch the ball. And y'all want me to pay me like a receiver? Y'all got to be out your mind. So, all right. So i glad you brought up Debo, right? Mm-hmm. Because Debo bet on him. Like, it's almost like a bet on himself, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever. A, another person who sim, who was similar to Debo. Yeah. Le'Veon Bell. 
He bet on himself. He exoxant. He was tripping though. <laughs> no, but similar similar situation to Debo. I agree. I agree. Similar situation to Debo, right? Mm-hmm. Just positions flip. Le'Veon was playing like a number two receiver, and he was playing like the number one running back. Debo mm-hmm. was playing like a number one receiver while playing like the number one running back. I also think Le'Veon, even though it ain't work out for him, he's kind of like a martyr though. Yeah, so why do people have he to fail of, to, for other people behind you to succeed? I mean... Like, what's the difference between Le'Veon and Debo at this time? None, but I, like I said... Besides the four-game suspensions to start every season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was... That's what I mean as well. He was tripping in that yeah, way he because, tripping. like, you didn't even have to do that. Just ball. And he was in water in a way, I guess, because he sacrificed his career. He, he hold up for a year. I'm like, you didn't really have to do all that. But anyways... If that's what I, it takes. I, I think he didn't think he was going to be out for the whole year. Mm, he thought Steelers was going to pay him. Yeah. Either that or demand a trade or something, bro. Like, I feel like you went about it the wrong way, in my opinion. But that opened the door. Like, that's what I think with these contracts as well. Like, when you're trying to get your maximum money, you're actually making it easier on the next generation as well. So mm-hmm. That's also a good thing. So, bet on yourself. You make it better for everybody else, man. That's all. That's a good. That's a good wrap up. Yes, not for the owners, and I mean I don't find the owners anyway. So it is what it is. Y'all been talking on the old Ime Udoka and the uh, Robert Sarver suspensions. I mean that kind of messy, but I don't even know if I could even tap into that. I don't even know what's going on to be honest. It keep changing. It sounds. Now. It sounds like more information has to come out because. I, I was at work yesterday, and I saw Stephen A. Malika Andrews. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I was like, they doing this on live TV like this? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. And then Go on, to commercial or something. On, then on her show, NBA Today, and Perk got brought on. Perk sort of took Stephen A.'s side, side yeah. an argument. And she just quickly shut him down, and she was like, well, thank you for joining us, giving us your input. And I was like, why is she wow. so sassy and... I say, like, wait, this must be deep. Because no, I think like, how they carry, how they carrying on. It's like because and then you know I saw a clip earlier today I where feelings probably was hurt though. Where, well, yeah, because basically Stephen A. pulled rank on it. Yeah, he's yeah. like, this is my show. Yeah, he's so like, after yeah, Perkins yeah. do it, she was like, okay, that's my show. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For sure. So, but yeah, but my Barnes was like, yo, he found out more details and you know. Um, Press to everybody involved and this and that. And that's a sound like they would just sound like it ain't just one woman, it's multiple. No, women it, I can I'll talk and I'll talk more off camera too. Yeah. And but I'll tell you my thoughts because I don't want like to, for it to be like speculation out there. But I, <laughs> I have a I, I've come with like almost like a timeline, like a like a how you have a timeline, not a timeline, but like I have a, I have, FBI I, have a I have a bunch of like speculations what I think happened because I, I did a lot of I did some research while I was at work. Wow. Yeah, because it was like, this just came out of nowhere, and it's like, if this always been going on, and then it was like, my thing was, if y'all, if this ain't, okay, he breached company policy, but he wasn't doing nothing that is caused for like a lawsuit. Like, it was no sexual harassment or anything like of that nature. The story, but, the story keep changing. Yeah, and they trying to make it seem like he did some like assault, sexual assault, harassment, but it's like. Y'all keep on saying it's a consensual relationship. So why y'all bringing this to the public and blowing it up yeah, so hard? Exactly. So, we, didn't need, we didn't need to know about it. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, if y'all suspend them and just say da 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 da, and that could have been it. But it was like press conference and all yeah. this and that. I mean, I think it was their press conference today. No, no, yesterday. Yeah, media day. So they had to say something, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's just all weird. Yeah, that was wild. And Robert Sarver is finally selling the Suns. Oh, he had no choice. One thing we know. Yeah, but people wanted him to sell the Suns for yeah, almost two, three decades because he always been a cheap owner. And yeah, but if you have shareholders pulling out now, your money. Oh, that's what happened? Yeah, bro. Once your yeah. money start dwindling, you have no choice. <laughs> your power is gone. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot I know a lot of people in Phoenix for years were like, even before the Phoenix Suns got good, before CP3 came, mm-hmm. they was like, yo, we have too much losing seasons. You trying to do all this funny stuff with the arena. 
Um, he's the reason why, basically, why the Suns in the 2000s never really could have given a hump because they didn't want to pay Joe Johnson to stay. And, like, you know, they never really wanted to tool the team. So, you know, and then that's why they sort of was meager for such a long time until, like, the late 2010s. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing with these owners, like, I, going back to the money thing. Most owners who want to win can spend money on their players. Let's be real, though. All the Jerry Buss and them and George Stein, Brenner and thing, they won't win championships for you. So they going as much money as they need to spend, they can spend it besides for Aaron Judge. Now, I guess it's his son now who he's spending the money. But even with Jeter, he got out of like a little struggles. But he had to pay him eventually anyways because he want to win. That's just what it is. Just what it is. Dodge Kadera. Like like everyone said, it, they have the money to spend it. If they want to, they will spend it. Look at the Mets. Look at the Mets. The Mets is a good example. Steve Cohen now came in are, and was like, well, my jersey you, get, you get the bub. You get the bub. You can get the bub. I will go and get this bub because he wants to win. He knew he wants to win. Like He, he will go exactly. get Otani. He'll probably go get Judge. Like don't let Yankees want to tell you. The old the <laughs> old who's who's the old owner? The um Y Ponds, the Will Ponds? Will Ponds, yeah. Yeah, the Will Ponds was to spend this money. I mean they go on bankrupt because of Bernie Madoff, so Yeah, making a that's a dumb deal. I mean but it happens, I guess. The owners have the money to spend and they will spend to they was um they will spend it to increase the possibility of success. No matter what it is, they will spend to increase the probability of success. So if they see something that's working or they see players that are um, um, intertwined with the team's philosophy and the team's like um, motive and they think that that person embodies the team mm-hmm. and that person can help them, they will spend the money. Yeah, no matter what it is, they'll spend the money. So bet on yourself. Yeah. The money's going to come. A lot of owners get trying to be like a business type. And they'd be like, oh, we could save money here, here, and here. It's like, bro, that's not what this is yeah, about. A lot of owners don't be focused on winning. They just be yeah. focused focus on, on making money. Turning yeah. a profit. That's why James Dolan won't want make the Knicks better. Yeah. Or he had to finally step out of the way, and it's like, okay, you putting a trash product on the court, but you're getting away with it because you have a basketball team playing in Madison Square Garden. That's my thing, though. Yeah. you in New York. So mm-hmm. if you have a good team, you could make way more money, bro. I don't understand. What is the issue with <laughs> Scared money don't make no money. Yeah, have y'all seen the Showtime um, live action show as well as the the Dynasty Lakers mini doc? I series? saw a uh-huh. bit of it. Okay, so Showtime came out. It was like basically they got actors to play magic in them. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I love that show because it showed. It showed them in different in different light and like Jerry Buss did not like his portrait. No, nobody like liked his. their portrayal. Like my no, Jerry like, Buss. I mean think of him. Um Jerry West. Jerry West, yeah. Yeah, but see, I was with them at first until like they did this docuseries and it was like they they portrayed them like when they got into all like Dr. Buss was really a playboy and Jerry yeah. was really like all antsy and anxiety and uptight. It was like, yo, it was spot on. You just didn't like it because you didn't co-sign this portrayal. You don't want mm-hmm. people to see it like that. But it's yeah. like if you watch how they talk in a docuseries, where they going from telling you like the bus farm and how it started now, episode seven, take you into the 2000s after the Kobe Shock years and how the dynamics between Dr. Bus and his kids and what's happening in the franchise and all these different things. It's like, bro, like, the the series almost spot on is just a little bit more exaggerated. So, you know. Yeah, for entertainment purposes. Of yeah, course. so they just didn't like that because they was like, oh, why are we being portrayed like this? <laughs> you know, or like, people keep on saying Kareem was a prickly and unfriendly. They showcase him that inside the show, and he said he didn't like the portrayal. Mm. And then actually, the um, Showtime Lakers just had a reunion, I think, yeah. last week. So yeah, it was two weeks. I, yeah. Yeah. They took the picture and stuff. And then had a little pickup game or whatever, like, you know. But it's like, eh. But like, that's a very interesting thing. That's tale. crazy. Most of that team's still there. Well, wow. Yeah. 
Because ain't nobody passed away yet. Yeah. That, you know. Um, that's a blessing. Yeah. But that's that's a good example of betting on yourself. Jerry Buss better on himself. Like, the deals, if you... And the dog, they really go into the deals. Like, how much hell he had to go through trying to keep the Lakers to be monetary beneficial. And, like, how he used to own the Kings. Mm-hmm. And then he had to sell the, King, the LA Kings. And then he had the Sparks for a certain time. But then mm-hmm. his son kept on, like, having these anxiety attacks. And him trying to get his children to be a part of the business. And how Jeannie was super into the business. And, you know, jealousy among the different relatives and things like that. You know, it's, it's a really good series to watch. Like, Check it out. Yeah. Showtime. Showtime on Lakers, the the start of a dynasty or whatever. All right. Good stuff. Anything else I have to say? No. Um, I feel like we've, give, we've given, like, good examples. We've had, like, good discussion points on, like, betting on yourself. Um, you know, Justin, Carl, me, not Kadeem. <laughs> not Kadeem. But in the building. In the appreciate way. you. Appreciate you guys for like watching through another video episode. Um, remember, if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're listening on any audio platform, hit us with the five star rating or leave your comments. Let us know what you think. Help us drive the show into what you want the show to be. Like I said, we have the vision, but um, you guys can help us. Stare the show uh, into what you want to see it. Give you what you want. Yeah, give you what you want. Glorilla, bet on herself. Bet on, bet on yourself. Women taking over rap, man. I don't know. That's what it is. The women been taking over rap. I agree. I agree. For the agree. last, like, couple of years. Since 2015. And like, Cardi B in the yeah, song, yeah, too. Cardi, I love yeah, Cardi B as well. Since, like, Cardi Bus. Like, it been, like, a whole wave. And, I mean, it been female rappers out. Before her, but I feel like Cardi set a wave. She set the wave. Yeah. yeah, and then all the Megan and City girls yeah. and the rest of them. Yeah. Started coming. She's a Leo, too. I know. Some no, actually, gals. Cardi is a Libra, bro. No, I'm talking about Glorilla. Oh. Some of Leo gals. Mm. My gals are Leo, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're all single men, I give it y'all the tips now. I get you a Leo woman. Just saying. Nah, bro. They like it. The, my only interaction with a Leo. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. No, Leos are really like sort of self centered, bro. Wow. Wow. They like all the attention to be on them. I Yikes. Know, like, if that can't be the case, then you, it's a problem. You got you to gotta try again, but try again. <laughs> <laughs> try again. <laughs> what to do? We out. We out.